I'm here representing the Texas Society of Homeopathy, which I co-founded about 21 years ago. I'm also a member of the American Institute of Homeopathy. I would like to suggest that homeopathic medicines are currently utilized in three ways, and then segue into the question of labeling. Level one, people who know very little about homeopathy use it in a very specific manner. They give, say, Arnica Montana for tissue trauma, bruises, Symphytum to speed bone healing, Belladonna for any and all fevers, or they buy a homeopathic mixture containing a number of homeopathic medicines <clears throat> with a general label saying allergy or headache or diarrhea or fever and so on. We sometimes call this type of prescribing this or that. Level two, acute prescribing. The person starts to study homeopathy and with the use of a book or two, learns how to treat simple self-limiting illnesses. They use a single homeopathic medicine. Nancy Papinski of Holistic Moms Network did that when she successfully treated her children and avoided using antibiotics. Such people become fascinated with homeopathy and prefer to use single medicines rather than mixtures. Level three, using a single homeopathic medicine and taking into account not only the chief complaint, but a panoply of mental, emotional, and physical factors, one attempts to treat multiple problems all at once. This kind of homeopathy is what Samuel Hahnemann, the founder, expounded in his seminal work, The Organon of Medicine. We call this way of prescribing classical homeopathy. It is what I and my colleagues from the American Institute of Homeopathy, the North American Society of Homeopaths, and the naturopathic physicians practice. We attempt, with varying degrees of success, to halt, perhaps cure, <clears throat> a chronic disease that can only be palliated or managed by conventional pharmacological products. We don't do level one homeopathy. We don't use mixtures, and we don't recommend our patients use them either. But we're not against them. Level one is gateway homeopathy, and we hope more and more users will move up into single medicine classical homeopathy. When one uses mixtures, one is using the shotgun approach, hoping one or more of the ingredients will give some relief. The classical approach uses a silver bullet, one medicine designed to bring about a radical transformation in the organism. Level one homeopathy is big and growing and is mostly what this hearing is about. Now about labeling. In a typical proving done by Hahnemann, there were often more than 2,000 symptoms recorded. And these were recorded not in a word or two, but in complete sentences. Two centuries later, some of these same medicines now have many thousands of symptoms in their pathogenesis. In the repertory, which is a book like a huge dictionary or concordance, in the repertory I use, there are 16,800 symptoms attributable to homeopathic sulfur. The idea of compacting that kind of data into one or two or at most three words to put on a label, well, frankly, it makes little sense to me and it misleads the consumer. I would propose the FDA consider removing labels indicating usage from all single homeopathic medicines simply because the present labeling system makes no sense. At the same time, the FDA might consider more extensive labeling of OTC homeopathic mixtures, even to the extent of a package insert suggesting that this product is no substitute for conventional medical treatment and must be used with caution. <clears throat> Now, to comment briefly on two points. The uh, first, the FDA has asked about the consumer and healthcare provider attitudes toward products labeled homeopathic. Virtually all speakers have uh, mentioned that, and I'm not going to dwell on it. Um, the point that the fact that the sales of homeopathic products are surging suggests that the consumer is voting with his pocketbook. The question is why? So some answers that I, 
I can provide daily. I hear patients say of their ailment, I've had this for a long time, I've been taking the prescribed medicines for months, and still I'm not getting better. Now I'm having side effects. Can homeopathy help? Another says, I've been to one doctor after another, one specialist after another. Nobody knows what's wrong with me. You think homeopathy can help? Someone else says, they tell me my condition is incurable, that I'll have to stay on this medicine for the rest of my life. I don't want to believe that. Can homeopathy help? <clears throat> it's very simple. Sick people want to get well, to feel better. And despite undergoing extensive testing and faithfully taking their prescribed medicines, they don't feel well. So they're turning to acupuncture, biological products, homeopathy, and other modalities. In a free society such as ours, I would say this freedom of choice is a good thing with the caveat that the products do no harm. Next point, the FDA wants to know, do consumers and health care providers have adequate information to make informed decisions about drug products labeled homeopathic? The cynical part of me wants to say probably not. I know when I treat myself, I am reminded of the great Sir William Osler who said, the physician who treats himself has a fool for a patient. However, the truth is, everyone self-diagnoses and self-treats. It's part of being human. I have a headache, I have arthritis, I'm depressed, and so on and so forth. With the advent of the internet, there is more medical information available, both reliable and useless, than at any time in human history. Millions of people are using the internet every day to learn more about what ails them, looking not only for a diagnosis, but alternative ways to treat themselves. Whether the consumer can self-treat reliably and effectively is another matter. Our panelist, Dr. Michelle, posted on the FDA website her criteria for the OTC products. She stated that these were her views and not necessarily those of the, F of the agency. She wrote that these products <clears throat> point, can be adequately labeled such that the consumer can self-diagnose, self-treat, and self-manage the condition being treated. No health practitioner is needed for the safe and effective use of the product. Point, drug has no potential for misuse and abuse. Point, safety margin is such that the benefits of OTC availability outweigh the risks. Can homeopathic products be labeled in such a way as to aid in self-diagnosis and self-treatment? I would say yes. The crucial part of Dr. Michelle's schema is that the, quote, drug has low potential for misuse and abuse, unquote. In the case of OTC homeopathic products, such potential is virtually nil. And the, quote, safety margin is such that the benefits of OTC availability outweigh the risks, unquote. A word about OTC non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Perhaps the best known OTC drug in the world is aspirin, followed closely by other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. These drugs are dangerous. In an article published in American Family Medicine, March 1, 2012, it was reported that there were over 400,000 hospital admissions per year in the United States because of gastrointestinal bleeding. The authors state, quote, it, gastrointestinal bleeding, has been associated with increasing non steroidal anti-inflammatory drug use, unquote. No homeopathic medicine is remotely as dangerous as aspirin and other non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Until the FDA has compelling evidence that OTC homeopathic products are harmful, they should continue to be as widely available as our OTC pharmaceuticals. As I suggested earlier, the homeopathic mixtures probably should have more comprehensive labeling. Chronic disease is merciless and relentless, and to cure it requires the best of all schools of medicine. The medicine of the future will be an astute melange using technology and chemistry to diagnose with patients having the opportunity to choose treatment from among several well-developed schools of medicine, conventional or allopathic medicine, homeopathy, traditional Chinese medicine, Ayurveda, and perhaps others. In sum, I wish to emphasize that homeopathic medicines are at least an order of magnitude safer than conventional pharmaceutical drugs and in the hands of an expert prescriber can be equally or more effective. Thank you.